Hi and welcome to this course build a complete e-commerce application using Flutter. In this course you will be taught how to create a complete e-commerce store using uh, Flutter and I'm going to be using Flutter as well as Firebase as our database. So by the end of this course you should have great understanding of Flutter because you will build a, complete, a very complicated project. Second you will be able to create your own uh, at uh, your own applications using Flutter. So this course will give you the opportunity to become a, a master in this framework in Flutter. I hope I see you in this course and thanks for listening. Hey everyone, today I'm going to show how to install Flutter in your Windows computer. To get started, go to flutter.dev website Once you are there, click on the Get Started button. Click on the Windows logo to get to the Windows installation instructions. These are some of the minimum system requirements you will need to install Flutter on your computer. You will need Windows 7 or later versions of Windows OS. As for disk space, you will need 1.64 GB. But it does not include space for IDE and other tools. So practically you will need about 5 to 10 GB of space to create Flutter apps. Also Flutter depends on having these two tools installed on your computer, Windows PowerShell and Git for Windows. PowerShell is pre-installed with Windows 10. If you are using a older version of Windows, you can download PowerShell from this link. If you don't want to install PowerShell, you can use Windows Command Prompt, which is pre-installed on every version of Windows. As for Git, you will need version 2 or later. If you already have Git installed, make sure you can run Git commands from the Command Prompt or PowerShell. I don't have Git installed, so I am going to download it. I am downloading 64-bit version setup file. If you are using 32-bit version of Windows, make sure to download 32-bit version setup file. Next step is downloading the SDK files. The SDK file contains Dart SDK, Flutter command line tools and all the necessary code you need to create Flutter apps. Click on this blue button to start the download. We have to get one more file as well which is Android Studio. Android Studio serves two purposes. First, you can use it as a code editor. Second, it provides Android SDK, Android SDK command line tools and Android SDK build tools which are required by Flutter for developing Android apps. Go to Android Studio website and download Android Studio. Once all three downloads are completed, we can proceed to installing them. Let's go ahead and open your downloads folder. I am going to install git first. In the git installation wizard, for most options, I am going to keep default settings. In this dialog, choose the second option. This will override new git repository's default branch name to main instead of master. Use recommended default settings for all the other options and finish the installation. Once installation is completed, we can check to see if it installed correctly by running git version command. Open PowerShell and type git dash dash version, then enter. You will see the git version you just installed. Next, let's install the Flutter SDK files. I am using WinRAR to extract the SDK zip file. If you don't have WinRAR, you can use any archiver program that you might have on your computer. Flutter recommends placing the SDK files in a folder that is directly in C drive. Also, it's important that you do not place the SDK files inside program files or your user folder that requires elevated privileges. So following the Flutter guidelines, I'm going to place the SDK files in C drive 
in a directory called src. Once the extraction is completed, let's go ahead and see the files that we just extracted. Inside the src folder, there will be a folder called flutter. This folder contains all the flutter SDK files. In order to run flutter commands on Windows console, we need to add flutter to Windows path environment variables. To add flutter to the path, open start and type env. In the search results, you will see 8 system environment variables. Click on it to open. Click on environment variables. Select path in user variables and click on edit. Here we will add Flutter's location as a new environment variable. Go to your Flutter SDK folder, then open bin folder and copy the location name. Then come back to environment variable settings. Click on the new button, then paste Flutter bin folder location. Once that is done, click OK. Now to check if the path is working, open PowerShell. In PowerShell, type Flutter and hit enter. You will see a welcome to Flutter message. Now that we have added Flutter to the path, we can run Flutter commands from anywhere on our Windows PC. Let's move on to the next step. Flutter provides a helpful command called Flutter Doctor. When you run this command, it will scan your computer for Flutter installation and displays a report of the status of your installation. Go to PowerShell, type the command Flutter Doctor and hit enter. It will take few seconds for the scan to complete. In the report, we can see that Flutter Doctor found two issues, unable to locate Android SDK and Android Studio not installed. To fix this issue, we have to install Android Studio. So open your downloads folder, then open Android Studio setup file to start installing Android Studio. I'm installing Android Studio with default options. Once the installation is completed, click finish. It will automatically launch Android Studio. Click OK on the Import Settings dialog box. Once it's loaded, you will see Android Studio Setup Wizard. Click Next to proceed to the next page. Here you can select the type of setup you want. Standard Setup will install Android Studio with most common settings and options. And in Custom Install, we can customize installation settings and components that are being installed. Select Custom Install and click Next. Keep Java development location to default and click next. Select the UA theme you prefer. On component setup page, keep the default selections. Android Studio will download the SDK files to this location. If you want, you can change it to different location. Select the amount of RAM you like to allocate for Android emulator. For my computer, the recommended size is 2 GB. It may differ for your computer based on your system configuration. So choose recommended size and hit next. Now we are at the final step. Android Studio will download all these components and install them on your computer. Click on the finish button to start downloading all the components. Wait for all the components to finish download. It will take some time. If you see any prompt like this, click yes. Alright, all the components are downloaded. Also, Android Studio has set up a new virtual device as well. Click on the finish button. Now that we have installed Android Studio and its components, let's run Flutter Doctor command once again to see if there are any issues. Flutter Doctor have found one issue. It says that Android license not accepted. It also has the command that we need to run to fix the issue. So let's run the command flutter doctor dash dash android dash licenses.
it says that seven out of seven licenses is not accepted. To review the licenses, type Y and hit enter on your keyboard. It will display all licenses in text format. Let's go ahead and accept all the licenses. Now, if we run Flutter Doctor command again, hopefully we will get no issues found message. Alright, uh, we are almost done with the Flutter setup. Let's move on to setting up our code editor. Open the instructions page and scroll down to the bottom of that page. Click on the setup editor link. Flutter recommends these three code editors for creating Flutter applications. I prefer to use Visual Studio Code because it is fast and it has clean interface. Open VS Code download link in a new tab. Click on that blue button to start downloading VS Code. Once download is completed, let's go ahead and install VS Code. Open VS Code setup file, accept the license agreement and click next. I'm going to keep the installation directly as it is. Keep the default option for this one too and continue to next step. In these options, make sure add to path is selected. I'm also selecting register code as a default editor for supported files. Once the installation is completed, click on the finish button. This will automatically launch VS Code. First, we need to install Flutter and Dart extensions. On VS Code, click on the extension button and type Flutter in the extension search field. Select Flutter in the search results, then click on the install button. This will also install the dot extension as well. To see if dot is installed, search for dot in the extension search field. As you can see, dot is installed. Alright, now we are ready to create Flutter application. In VS Code, press Ctrl Shift P on your keyboard. This will open VS Code's common palette. In the common palette, type Flutter. In the search results, you will see Flutter new application project. Click on it, then select a location to save the project. I am going to select my documents folder. Next, we need to enter a name for our project. I am going to give the name Flutter demo for my project. After adding the project name, press enter on your keyboard to proceed to the next step. The Flutter extension will create our new project with a pre-built demo app. At the right side bottom, you might see a notification like this. Select Yes. This will add some VS Code settings for a better experience editing Flutter code. Since we already have a pre-built Flutter app, we can run the app on a virtual device to preview it. On VS Code bottom right side, you will see the default device that Flutter is selected to run the app. We can change the device by clicking on the device name. Once you click on the device name, VS Code will display a list of devices that are available. Since I like to preview the app on your mobile device, I'm going to choose Pixel 3a. The Pixel 3a Android emulator was created when we installed Android Studio. Clicking on the device name will set it as a default device and launch the Android emulator. It may take few seconds for the emulator to load. While it's running, I'm just placing it at the right side. I'm going to place VS Code and emulator side by side. Once the emulator is loaded, we can preview the app. On VS Code menu, go to Run and select Start Debugging. You can also use the keyboard shortcut F5. Once debugging is started, you can see that VS Code is running task called Cradle Task Assemble Debug. When trying to debug an Android app for the first time, the Cradle Task process will take some time to complete. It might take like 10 to 15 minutes. The Cradle task will convert project source files into a single APK file and then install the APK file to the virtual device. So when running for the first time, it will download some build tools that are necessary to create an APK file. Once the build process is completed, you will be able to see the app in the Android emulator. 
here we have our flutter demo app you can interact with the app like you can do on a real android device flutter offers a tool called hot reload when you make changes to the source code and save the file you can see the changes instantly on the virtual device to demonstrate hot reload i'm going to change the primary swatch color from blue to red once i save the file the app reloads and displays the changes instantly This Android emulator was created by Android Studio when we installed it. It runs on Android version 11. If you want to test your app on a different Android version or if you want to test on device like a tablet or watch, you can create a new Android emulator. To create a new Android emulator, open Android Studio. On Android Studio welcome screen, go to configure and select AVD manager. Android device manager will display the list of devices that are available. Right now I have only one device which is Pixel 3a. To create a new virtual device, click on the create virtual device button. You can select a mobile device from this list of mobile devices. Clicking the tablet button at the left side will display the list of tablet devices. Likewise for other Android devices. I am going to use Pixel 4 XL for my emulator. After selecting the device profile, click next to continue. Then select the Android OS version you would like to use. I am going to use Android version R. If you like to use different Android version, you can download by clicking on the download link. Once OS version is selected, click next to proceed to the next step. At the verify configuration screen, choose graphics settings from automatic to hardware. This will use your computer's graphic card to render Android emulator screen. So you will get good performance. You can also customize few other settings. Click on the show advanced settings button. You can set Android emulator boot type to cold boot or quick boot. Increase or decrease RAM size. Also you can increase or decrease SD card size. If you don't want to use SD card, you can select the no SD card option. Once you verified all the settings, click finish. All right. Now we have our second emulator ready to use. You can launch the emulator by clicking on this play button. If you want to delete an emulator, click on the down arrow icon and select delete. Let's delete this Pixel 3a device. Since it's running, we need to close it. then click on the arrow icon and select delete i'm going to launch the emulator from vs code so let's close the device manager since no emulator is running vs code selected chrome as a default device click on the device name and choose pixel 4 xl from the available devices Once the emulator is loaded, click on the Run and Debug button to preview the demo app on the new virtual device. Since Flutter 2 supports web, let's see how the app looks on your browser. After closing the Android emulator, Chrome will be set as the default device. On VS Code, you can run multiple devices and preview your Flutter app on all devices at once. I will show how to do that on another tutorial. clicking on the run and debug button will launch chrome and display the app as a web page you can make changes to the source code and see the changes immediately on chrome too i hope this video was helpful for you for more videos like this click like and subscribe to my channel Thank you for watching. Welcome to the Flutter course on building an e-commerce app. Before we even start creating the course, I'll just open up this picture to show you where are we going. What are we trying to do here firstly is to build this UI. Uh but for the first few videos I'm going to touch on some basic components of Flutter, some basic knowledge you have to have in in order to build applications for Flutter. 
and specifically for this video the first one we are going to talk about widgets in a very vague way and what are those widgets are basically simple put every component of the UI uh, in flutter is a widget everything you see on the screen is a widget for example in this UI we are going to build you have this app bar here you have the carousel you have this image you have these icons you have these images in the grid view they, they are all widgets so widgets are just component of the application right okay uh, today we're going to create our very first application flutter application it's going to be a simple hello world and we're going to use the center and the text widget right if you have flutter installed or the flutter package in your android studio you'll have this option if you don't if you don't just go check my video on how to set up your flutter environment unfortunately i just made a video for windows uh, because I know that most of you guys are using Windows uh, and if you do need some and if you do need to have a video on Mac I will create another one and upload just let me know in the comments below okay if you have everything ready and set up for this you just come here and hit start flutter project hit next here we are going to call this project fashion shop for example or we're going to call it flutter ecom ecom of e-commerce flutter ecom okay next finish this may take a couple time while when you're creating the project for the first time so just wait and give it some time so guys here you have it uh, after the application is created this is what you're going to get All right so just hit run and you can run on iPhone only if you're using Mac if you're not using Mac you can have an Android device on your Android studio and to do that you just come here you just create virtual device you pick the device you want to create for example here is this one you hit next and then you're supposed to download one of these systems uh, which is the system you're going to use after this is done you will be able to just start your Android emulator for the flutter projects I'm not going to download this for now I'm going to use the iPhone X but if you are on Windows and you don't have a virtual uh, simulator you can use this or else if you have a cable you can connect your real device it's going to work and I, I would encourage you to use a real device if you have the option to okay let's go back to it uh, we're not I'm not going to try to explain this code now because it would be kind of overwhelming but I'll just run it to show you guys what is in here let me zoom it I'll just run it and we'll see this may take a couple secs but it's okay 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 here we have it so guys this is what you get this is your application like all of this what this code does 
is displayed here. You have a calendar. Each time you click here, the number here will change. That's not rocket science. But okay, we don't want this for now. So what are we going to do? We are going to just Command A or Control A on Windows. Delete the code. After you do this, you need to open here and you see this folder and delete it. Okay. Let's start it from zero. Okay. And the first thing you're going to do when you want to write your Flutter application is to import a package called Flutter slash material dot dart and this just allows us to use material design on our applications and if you don't know what material design is simply put material design is a google design guideline which is uh, it has a set of rules to improve the user interface on your applications and uh, uh, web application, mobile applications. It's just a Google Design guideline, and we need to use uh, that the, the the set of instructions of uh, material design on on Flutter, or the set of guidelines. Okay. Uh, after you import this, we are going to write void main. And if you're coming for backgrounds like C or Dart programming, you know, already know that the main function is like the mother function. That's why the program will start the execution, right? Inside of here, you write run app. And then we are going to write new material app. Again, making use of the material design. And inside of a widget, this is our first widget, the material app. This is the main widget. Uh, consider this widget has the whole screen, like this widget will be responsible for the whole screen. And it has a lot of different properties, but for now we'll just focus on home. And for the home, I'm going to use a widget called new center and inside of the center we are going to use a child means the widget we are providing now is supposed to be inside of the center widget and for the child we're going to give new text we are using a text widget and inside of here I'm going to write hello world let's run this And this is what you have. And boom, you have your very, very first Flutter app. Okay, it doesn't seem or look very exciting, but still, it's, it's, it's an app. So, let me go back to the basic structure. First, you have to Im import the Flutter and material uh, material dot dart for mat for material design. Then, inside of the main function where the program execution starts, you have a, spe a special function, a library function called run app. And inside the run app, we are going to have a widget called new material app. Right. Then for the new material app, we are providing a home property and saying that the home for the app is going to be a widget called center widget. That's why our text here is centered. And inside of the center widget, we are going to provide another widget, a child widget, a text widget. And you have it here, text widget. Okay, uh, before I finish this, the, our very, very first video, let's try to change the home widget here 
and we're going to provide a widget called container. Uh, container widget and again we're going to write child of the container we're going to provide the text widget and we're going to call it hello world 2 okay let us run this and here you see the difference because we are not using the center widget, the text is no more center. You see, it's just up here. Uh, but here, I can give you, I, we can use a different properties. For widget, you can have many, many multiple properties. I will not just uh, choose a widget and give it, and give all of its properties because it's going to take a long time. I'm going to explain the properties of the widget and the widget as we need them right but before I finish the video I can just show you something called color and to provide the colors you just write colors dot then you choose a color let us take white and control s wait a second Okay, it's done now. You see, I just provided the color, colors.white, and the background color just changed. Okay. So, uh, this was the very 101 video or class or lecture on Flutter. Okay, and you already have your first very first flutter application right for the next video we're going to talk about a couple more widgets the basic ones before we get into the real stuff thank you for being here see you on the next one hello guys welcome back in the next video here is where we left off and this is what we have on our on our simulator okay uh, now today we're going to talk about two widgets two very very important widgets and the two widgets are going to be the column widget and the row let's suppose we want to have this text multiple times. So I want to have hello world here, hello world here, hello world here, and so on. How can we do that? Okay, to do that, we use a specific widget called the column widget. Okay, so let me delete these. Oh no, I will replace the text widget with with a column. You can have multiple or n widgets inside of a specific widget. There is no limitation number. You can have a container inside of a container inside of a container and so on. Okay. Here for the column, we're going to give column. Right? And inside of a column, we are going to write children. Notice the difference. Here we have the container and inside of this widget, the container widget, we are providing another widget, a single widget, the column. That's why we're giving child. But for the column, well, we are going to have multiple widgets. We want to have a text uh, under a text which is under another text. So we have three text widgets. So, to make that possible, you don't write child, you write children. Children widgets. Okay? Uh, 
children and these square brackets represent list means that you're going to give a list of widgets that's why I have widgets here this is just the type of the content of the lists you're providing right okay let me copy okay let me write it text hello one let's try to run and see what's going to happen you have here hello one you have it all the way up here because you're using a container and not a center widget right uh, to make our lives easy we can just come here and change this to center and for the center widget you don't have this okay we'll use the center widget for now it's going to work perfectly for us just run the app again here we have hello one uh, let me try to drag it over here I'm having a hard time here okay it's good enough it's just wasting my time um, uh, so you will be able to see here the transformation I don't have to minimize if you want to give another widget another text widget below this you have to separate both of them using a comma then we're going to give text and we're going to write here hello to And if you run it, you have it here. Hello too. And if you want to give another one, you just give here text. Then hello. Oops. Hello tree. Here you have it. Okay. So let's suppose we want to use a row. We can just come here and change column for row. Simple. And let's see what happens when you run it. Wow. And now you have a problem and now you may be wondering what's happening this is simple the widgets we have hello one hello two hello three uh, they are wider than the screen I don't know if I make any sense but to make this easy I can just come here and comment this and let's run it again you see Oh, uh, to make this okay let me try to uncomment here and see if it's going to fit the width of the screen and it doesn't okay let me erase here I will write one over here and two over there let's run it then you have a column one two right simple okay guys uh, so for column and row it's all for now of course we have a lot of a lot of things we can do with those widgets rows and columns but I, I don't want to make this a specific flatter course or of a course on widgets because our goal is to build the e-commerce site I'm just providing the basics the basics the basic knowledge so that we can go and start building our e-commerce application with no problem but if you think my pace is being way too fast and you're not able to understand just let me know and I can slow down a little bit thank you for your time see you on the next one
hello guys welcome back for today's video we are going to touch on a very 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 important widget which is a list view and to explain to you how does a list view work we are going to give the column example again and then i'm going to see what's the problem with the column then we're going to use the list view okay before we do that let me do what uh, let me erase this write it again so just to make you practice just for a little bit you know the first thing you have to do is import flutter material package then you're going to write void main okay and in here you're going to write run app you close it with the same column inside of a run app we're going to give material design app and for material design app you're going to provide the home inside of the home we're going to give the widget we want to use we're going to use a center widget to make things easy for us. And inside of a center widget, we're going to give a child of this particular widget. And the child is going to be a column for now. And inside of a column, we're going to provide children. And for the children, let us give text widgets and as you can see sometimes I write new and sometimes I don't write new it's not compulsory to write new so to make things easy I'll just remove the news the news so I don't want you guys to get complicated okay in here I'm going to write one comma I'll copy this Let me paste it a couple times and run. You see, we have one, 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 one. Okay, but let's see what's going to happen if we just have these ones, 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 ones with no limit. Okay, let's try to run the app. And you have this. This kind of error usually appears when you when the height of the content is greater than the height of the screen or the width of the content is greater than the width of the screen and the column is not a scrollable widget so to overcome these instead of using columns to have things in vertical uh, ordered in a vertical way like this we use a list view list view and just run this again and see the magic kaboomba just like that you can now scroll you see so if you want to have scrollable widgets you can just make use of list views and simple like this and inside of this list view you can have a lot of different widgets I'm just using text widgets because it's the simplest thing we can do and use now okay but it doesn't mean that you can all only use text widgets I don't know why my hard reloading is not working but usually when you press control or command s uh, this is supposed to automatically change I have to run the app maybe that's not your case just press command s or control s to reload the content of your application in here but okay guys uh, this was a very quick video and this was simple actually and just like that we got rid of list views okay Thank you for your time. See you on the next one. Well, 
uh, before we really get into the video guys I would like to tell you that this video and the next one I'm going to upload are still regarding only the basic concepts of flutter so be after I upload this video and the next one I'm going to upload both of them in the same day today so after I upload both of this video uh, regarding the basic concepts I will start uploading only the the tutorial on how actually we're going to build our complete um, on our, our complete e-commerce I'm giving you this notification just now guys because I know that some of you are really expecting to start building the project but I really have to give the basic concept of flutter so that when we start building we are all in the same page like even people new to flutter and those of you who already have some knowledge regarding flutter because I know that most of you already know how to do basic stuff like list views and grid views and this kind of stuff so if you already have knowledge of flutter you don't need to watch neither this video or the next one just wait uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow i'll start uploading only the video regarding the the, the building process of, of our application here on, on the screen uh thank you for your time guys and uh thank you very much for your understanding see you for this video we're going to talk about the widget called grid view and grid view is just like list view, but sometimes you want to have things instead of a single list, you want to have things on a grid view, on a grid mode. So that's when you use grid view. Let's talk about grid view. As you know, import what package, which package? Flutter.dart, okay? And then void main. I just erase this so you can code along with me and practice right then run app then inside of this we're going to write new material app then we're going to give home and inside of home we're going to give mm, grid view count then we have a property called the cross axis count and what does it mean it basically means okay in this grid view how many columns uh, arranged horizontally do you want to have if you write two means you want to have one column here and another one here if you write three means you want to have here here and here four here here and here here okay let's start off with two okay and then the next thing you're going to do is write children and for the children let's give text sorry it's supposed to be capital text and here we are going to give one then we're going to write again text two. You run the application and here you have it. Let me just do this. I'll copy here. I'll paste it here and write three. Okay, let me save and run this and this is the magic you have this here so let's come here to the cross axis count and change the, tr the 2 to 3 and run it and you see the magic uh, and just to show you how does it work let's just cut paste these a couple times run the app here you have it one two three one two three one two three one two three okay this was very very quick and this was a video on grid view 
I really hope you guys did understand and I hope you guys did like the video. And sorry, uh, I usually know that the beginning, it's already bo it's always boring, like learning this kind of stuff. You don't really understand what are we, what, what, what are you actually doing and like the apps are just horrible looking. But it's a process we have to go through, right? You, we have to make sure that we, we, we're going this way. And just a reminder, this is what we're going to build. So I don't want you to feel down or feel bored or learning this kind of stuff because this kind of stuff will make it possible for you to build this kind of stuff. As you can see here, I'm making use of a grid view and you're going to use this knowledge here, right? Okay, guys, thank you for your time. See you on the next one. I'm back. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most important topics of Flutter. I know I say that every video like this is one of the most important topics, but that that's the thing. This video is uh, very, very important. <clears throat> Sorry. And I just have this image on the screen just to motivate you to show to you where are we going. So don't feel down while learning this boring stuff and everything. Just to make you feel motivated. This is where we're going. But okay, for now, we're going to talk about stateless widgets. And what are stateless widgets? Okay, I can tell you that stateless widgets, uh, basically widgets that never change the state. Oh, they don't really have a state. They are all, always the same. Uh, and I believe that that's kind of hard for you to understand if the first, if it is the first time you're hearing the concept. But uh, to give you an example, for example, a uh, login screen, to create a login screen, you would use a stateless widget because the contents of a login screen will never change. But if you want to create a home screen like this, you would ha use uh, another type of widget, which we're going to talk about on the next video. It's called a stateful widget because the content of this screen will change. Every time a person posts a new product, so every time we have a new product, these images will change okay okay if it was hard don't worry you will understand it as we code what's the use of stateless and not stateless and stateful widgets and all of that stuff if i go back to the last video this is the last thing we had on the screen right we're running, we, we're writing import void, and inside of the material app, we are providing home is equal to grid view and all of the stuff. But see, sometimes the application, most of the times, the application will be very, very large, and you can't just come inside of the main and write the whole program. It's going to be very hard for you to debug, to troubleshoot the application. And it's not a good practice at all to have all of the code together and sometimes code that are not even related to one another. So to overcome these, we use stateless or stateful widgets. How do they work? I'm going to use this, uh, the same example, right? Or I can clear the screen to make things easy and go again import package ladder the dart then void main and in here I'm going to use run app then inside run app oh sorry I'm missing the same column okay inside run app I'm going to give uh, material app and inside of this I'm going to give home mm, let's create a column 
Is it okay? Okay, column. Let's use different widgets for today. And before I use a column, let me make use of a center widget. Center widget. And we're going to create a child. And as a child, I'm going to give the column. And I want to use different widgets today. Icon. You see? Can use this widget. The icon widget, you write icon, open brackets, and you write icons dot um, person. And inside, in down here, I'm going to give text, then I'm going to provide what? call I'll write username for example or oh, I'll write user only let us run this and see what happens okay this is not really really centered this is not really centered actually it is but because we're dealing with a column here we have this in this way okay let me try to copy this I'll paste it down here and you know what for the center widget let's provide the container I guess it would be easier for us to see what's going on and for the container I'm going to give the property color then you give colors if you want to change the color you give the parameter color column colors dot then the color that you want and you have the user here It's not really, really what we're looking forward to, but still, let me just comment this out. Okay, I can still find ways to arrange this, but it's going to take a time and we don't really need to do that. Um, let me write text and in here I'll write uh, column here I'll write user again then you just have user user okay now we don't usually do this what do we do let me cut that and we create a separate class use the shortcut the shortcut stl enter okay now we'll create a class called let's call it home home page This is stateless widget. What's the structure? The class, the class name, the home page is the class name. And we are saying that it extends a stateless widget class. Inside of here, we are overriding another class. Um, if you don't know what overriding is, if you don't have a very deep knowledge of programming, right? Overriding is basically writing over something if I can define it like that this function the build function is defined inside of this stateless widget class with this class is the home page class is just giving a new content or providing a particular content to this build class 
okay maybe that's hard for you to understand for now but just stick here with me and with time this this things are going to get easier home we are going to give home page right and the error is gone here you are going to return a container and inside of this container you are going to give child let me give text hey Then we have it here. Hey. Again, I can just do color and write colors the pink, for example. Here you have it. Let's suppose I want to style the text here. You can do that by doing this. You can just do style and inside here we are going to write text style And in here, going to give the property color. Then you give colors the white, for example. You do need to have dark programming knowledge to understand this. I repeat that point again. And if you're not, go and watch uh, the dark section or the dark videos I have. Okay. So let's run this. Here you have it. You did change the color of the text. So you may be wondering now, how useful is that? By using these, we can do something very incredible. We can remove this class from this particular page. Let me reopen here okay maybe I don't need to reopen we can create a file come here you create new dart file let's call it home okay in this file you're going to need to import the package and then and then paste it here you see if you come back here you can just come and import home dot dart and it's done what happened uh, for example on your main page on the main page of the app you're not going to have the whole code of the application you will have a login page, you'll have a registration page, and you can have code for those pages on different files and just import the files in this main file. Right? If we run this, nothing is going to change. But if you come in here and change here the background color to something like what? blue and run the app you see everything changes okay so this was a stateless widget we have another thing called stateful widget for now, you will not be able to see the difference of stateful, of stateful widgets and stateless widgets because uh, even if I write them, it will look as if they do the same thing. Okay, let us, let me comment on this and 
I'll write in here STF for stateless stateful widgets and again I'll give the name home page and what happens you have state class home page extends stateful widgets override home page create state we are creating a particular state then we have the state which are recreating here extends the home page class right is the state of this home page class then we are overriding the build method again and inside of here we can come and write what 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 what, what. I mean, I'm going to use a text sorry I have to give child okay child text and I'm going to write I am a stateful okay we have it here I am a stateful for now it seems like they are doing the exact same thing but uh, let us just advance on the course and we'll reach a point where you will completely understand the difference between the stateful and the stateless widget okay but as I told you basically the states of a stateful widgets can change while the stateless widget has no state so no state can change right I really hope you did understand me and for the next video we are going to start building something right something is coming see you on the next one is hello gentlemen uh, we are finally here and I know that this is the part most of us have been waiting the part where we start actually building our project so okay without further ado let's get into it the first thing I would like you I want you to do is to download this folder I'll leave the link in the description for this after you download this images folder you're going to have these images then cats the images and these images all of these images are going to be very 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 important throughout our project but I'll leave the link in the description of the video Oh, I'll, I'll provide the link somehow uh, so the first thing you're going to do open Android studio then we're going to let me if you're using a Mac you can just do terminal uh, open simulator if you are using Android studio you won't do it like this you have to open Android Studio first then you'll run your virtual device which is going to be an Android device right okay while our device is booting we're going to start flutter project then you hit next then we're going to name this shop app underscore of tutorials or course what uh, I'll give it course uh, I'll give okay I'll leave it to course to you can name this whatever you want this is just a name I'm providing okay I'm going to give next and finish this may take a while to finish so just be patient okay so after all the processing is done this is what you're going to get let's try to run this app this is just a simple app a basic one we just are going to run it and see what are we going to see let me try to push this over here 
so it will be easier for us to see what's happening uh, when you are running the app for the first time it usually takes some time to show on the emulator so let's just wait for a while or just jump see you in a second So guys, uh, this is it. Here we have the app. This is a basic one. It comes with our Flutter framework. I guess we all know that by now. So the first thing we're going to we're going to do before we even start working, we're going to take this folder, the images folder, and we are going to copy it over here let's just drag it and drop drop it here okay then you have it uh, for you it's going to be probably on your downloads folder you just uh, take the that that the, the folder you downloaded drag and drop it here okay so let's start working uh oops did i just move main dot dart it's just a copy okay what am i doing i'm sorry guys i'm dragging this with a um let let us start working now i would like to have a reference of what we're doing here actually so it would be nice to have a screenshot of our app as a reference but for now we can do this we will delete here and just write import we're going to import the package flatter material dart then uh, avoid main oops rain app I guess that by now you guys already know what's happening here and I'm going to call this widget material app widget And I'm going to give home. Then I'm going to create a stateful widget. And I'll call that widget home page. As for now, we don't have this home page. So what are we going to do is come down here. You just write STF and you'll get the shortcut shortcut and you can write home page so the error will disappear okay let's try to run this and see what's going to happen nothing so what are we going to do here instead of returning a container we are going to return a widget, a very helpful widget called the scaffold widget. For the scaffold widget, we have some properties which are very, very handy. And one of them is the up bar. Then we're going to give this new up bar. We're going to provide a property called title and for the title we're going to give text uh, the name of our app is shop app I guess let's try to run this again now Ta -da! magic 
so let's do a small recap here on our run app we are running a material app widget and one of the properties of the material app widget is the home and for the home we are providing this home page which is a stateful widget you have your stateful widget as the home page what is it a stateful widget why is the home page uh, consider a stateful widget not a stateless widget because in this home page we'll probably have things that will change for example we can have um, things that every time you reload the app are going to load differently the contents are supposed to change and most probably you are going to need to change the state of certain widgets inside of the home page widget that's why we will consider this one as a stateful widget okay you just have stateful widget override mean meaning that this function the create state function is an existing function defined inside of this class stateful widget we're just uh, give, giving a new meaning to this class to this function we are creating a state for the home page and this state is called the home page state and here we are creating that class the home page state where we are defining the build function this function is going to build the widget right on that actual context and context is basically uh, where where the widget is sitting inside of the app maybe that's kind of hard to understand for now but okay just bear here with me and i guess that when we'll be using these uh, things it, they're going to get easier but okay let's stop the talking and go back to the coding so here we have it and uh, what else are we going to do we're going to do so we're going to do background color we're going to give it colors dot red you can give it any color you want I just gave it red because the, the, the original app is red and just hit control s uh, command s for Mac and it will automatically save it. so now what do we want to do I would like to do uh, I would like to make this disappear here this banner here so you write debug show check mode banner and just write false you hit command s and uh, okay for this one we need to reload here it's gone okay let me open the image of the original app so we can have reference of what we're trying to do for whatever reason I just deleted it but I will just I will just recover the image okay let me open it so here's what we have here we have two icon buttons here and we have one icon here but okay this icon will be provide provided automatically when we're going to use our drawer which are going to do to do in this specific class for now let's try to this do this and as you can see the name of the app here I gave fresh app and here I'm giving shop app so I'll go back to fresh app so we'll be doing exactly the same thing fresh app which stands for fashion app right okay how can we do that first let's change the name I want to do the same thing so am I deleting something that I'm not supposed to delete okay mm, let's give it fresh app Now, what are we going to do? 
here we are going to use a property called action and inside of the action let me zoom it so to make sure that it's visible for you guys and inside of the action we are going to provide a new icon button we need a button then for the icon we are going to give icon then we are going to give icons dot the first icon is search I was misspelling it search let's command save to see what happens and you see we have the search button here but we have a couple problems not very visible so to do this to solve this problem we can try coming in here and write color and we're going to give it colors dot white come and save it it's white but still if you try to press it nothing is going to happen why because here for this property on 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 pressed it's now what are we going to do we're going to provide an empty function here just like this this means that the function is empty for now right? And if you can see now have a special effect when you click on it now let's just to not waste time let's just copy this and we will paste it and the icon now we're going to give shopping cart So I guess that things are starting to come as we want them to do. Uh, well, as I don't want the videos to be very, very, very long because I'll be making multiple videos. I will just have a goal which we're going to reach for each video. And for our specific video today, we are going to do the drawer. So if you don't know how to do drawers on Flutter, you'll be learning today. Okay, to do the drawer, we'll do this. Um, outside the app bar, we'll write drawer. Okay, and for the drawer widget, we're going to give new new drawer. And what else? inside of this new drawer we are going to create a child inside of the drawer we want to create a child and the child is going to be a list view okay so you see you see now why we took time learning learning about list views and grid views and stuff okay inside of this uh, list view we're going to write children again if you notice here we are writing drawer child then here for list view we are writing children right because for the drawer widget we only have one widget inside of it the main one that's why we give a child because it's unique we only have this list view and inside of a list view, you can have multiple widgets that's why we're giving children and here we are providing the type the type of the, the the elements of this list that's why we're giving here widgets okay okay uh, usually I like to comment because when the code is starting to get very very large it's going to be kind of hard to understand what's what so let's just comment here header meaning is the header part of our of our drawer and then I'm going to give new uh, user 
user account drawer header you see this auto completion is very handy because you don't really need to remember how you exactly spell all of the properties you just give it like that so inside of here we have to provide two things the account name and the email for the account name we're going to provide text you can write new text or you can just write text it's really up to you uh, text meaning the name of the user now we're going to just write to fix it but when we when when the application has some back hand on it it's going to fill it it's going to fill these fields automatically from the database I'm going to give here Santosh and knock okay and another thing we may need to provide here is text uh, make sure the T is capital text it's going to be text what for the mail I'm going to provide my mail uh, Santosh enoch.ss at gmail.com okay let's try to save this and see if only doing this this is going to work okay we have this it's already working we have a drawer already so you have a reason to be happy now you can make a basic application with a drawer on it and you can see that the username we provided the account name we provided here is here and the email is here okay let's continue working just to format the code to rearrange the code and the shortcut for that is command option shift l on mac or control alt shift l on windows and then enter so okay uh, now we have this drawer but we still have to modify some things here and to do that we may need to I may need to put this on full screen for now okay delete this test folder it's of no use okay and the error is gone if you open your images folder We'll be looking for a specific picture we are going to use as our profile picture. Let me see, let me make sure I have that image here. Okay. I guess I don't. But okay, I will take care of that. For now, let's just write here outside the this this widget here why does it finish here okay outside of this widget just put a comma we'll go down and now we'll write another widget called I will write new we want here current It wasn't supposed to be here. I'm sorry. We'll write here current profile picture. Okay. Now for the current profile picture, we're going to provide another widget called gesture detector. Right. Inside of the gesture detector, 
we're going to provide a child widget and that child widget is going to be new circle avatar and here I can just provide background color for now I'm going to make it gray colors dot gray for example uh, let's run and open our simulator and see if you see we must provide an image here but i'm going to do that on our next video because i didn't upload for whatever reason a profile picture and i'm going to teach you how to do that don't worry about that for now let's try to do something in here we can also write let's see how is this going to come child icon and in here we're going to write icons dot person for example and I'm going to give this color oops color I'm going to give this colors dot white okay <clears throat> now we can just this let's open our simulator let's see how is it and okay it's not very good looking but still we will change this on the next one so I guess that there's no we don't have a big reason to worry about this okay is this enough let's do last thing in here still we will write in here I guess that the main problem with this is detecting where is the ending point of the widget one of the best things about Android Studio and IntelliJ is that they auto comment the end of the widget but uh, at the time I used to use Visual Studio for this, they didn't have this and it was very difficult for me. Even now, sometimes I get confused somehow, but that's not a problem. We're going to write here decoration. It's going to be new box decoration. This is what we want. And what we want to change here is the color. And we're going to write colors dot let's try red for now and again about the colors I'm using if you don't like them you can just change you can just change them and put the ones you like no problem about that okay on my original project I used pink but I guess that uh, red is just fine so we can just carry on with the red now what are we going to do uh, I have to make here is the point user account header so I will comment oops I'll comment body and here for the body I'm going to I'm going to provide the widget called oh <clears throat> even before I use the inkwell I wanted to use a widget called inkwell I will show a normal one so you'll understand the use of the inkwell this is going to be a list tile widget for the list tile widget you can give the following properties and one of the again we can have many many and so many different type of widgets in flutter and if I just did videos on widgets and the different properties of that widget we would take a whole tutorial just doing that and this is not the point of this tutorial this the point of this tutorial is building something so what I'm going to do when we talk about a specific type of widget 
I will take time to explain a little bit and use uh, like the main properties of that widget. Okay. So the list tile widget has the title probably you have to have a title. And for the title, I'm going to give a text. And I'm going to call this text. Let's give it capital H. I'm going to call this text uh, home page, okay? Okay. Then, let me try to control save it first. Oh, you know what? Let's just do this and go back to this. I guess it's faster like this. Okay, control save. Let's see. And here we have home. But for now, this is not what we want, right? So I'm going to provide another property called leading. And for the leading, I'm going to give icon. And icon is icons dot icons dot home. Okay. We control save it and we have here home. Okay. So <clears throat> if you try to click this, nothing is going to happen. Why? Because this is just a widget, this is just a text widget and an icon widget. This is not a button. If you want to turn any widget on the app into a button, we use another widget called the Inkwell widget. So now we just come here, double click here. Go down. Double and click on that yellow light or bulb I don't know then we're going to wrap this with a new widget and we're going to call this new widget inkwell widget and we have to provide a property called on tab and we're going to give an empty function for now then we're going to assign a certain task with this function but that's not a task for now okay so now if you control save and you come here do you see what's happening now you can click on this because this is a button now okay so instead of just writing this again and again and again and again and again we'll do the following <clears throat> let us uh, excuse me let us open this image like again I'll have to go to the trash we have this image okay let me open so I will see how the how our drawer is arranged so this is kind of different but okay we can get there I gave pink for this one and here I gave red. You can just change these colors really up to you. And I gave red for, for, for the icons, but now I'm just give, going to leave it like that. And if you want to change, you can do it, no problem. Then after home page, I gave my account, my orders, and categories. So let's do it ASAP. What I'm going to do is just copy is just copy these. jump twice you paste it jump twice paste jump twice paste you control save it and it's going to I love flutter okay uh, let me open that picture so we're going to see how is it okay my account my orders so we have home here we're going to write my account 
and I'm going to write icons dot person. Here I'm going to write. We're going to have my orders. Funny thing is now I'm forgetting the name of that icon. The shopping basket, and I had. Categories. I guess I gave a dashboard for this. We just control save and automatically it's going to change over here. And let me open the picture so I can see what else do we have. Then we have favorites, then we have settings, and finally about. Okay. So let's let's go. Uh let me copy this again. Oops, this is where the inkwell ends. We're going to favorites, and here for the icon, we're going to change this to favorite. We have here. We have it. If you pay attention, we kind of have a line here dividing this upper section with settings and about. So to have that, it's easy. You can just come in here, you go down, and you just write here widget called divider. This is all you need. Then paste these ones. Paste this again. This is going to be settings, and here we're going to give settings, and finally we're going to have about, and here we have icons dot. Control save this and here you have it okay so you can just click here for now we have no 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 specific task or function for this uh, because the, these functions are empty on tab we'll give empty functions for that but I guess that this video was already long enough I really hope you guys did like the video and did enjoy the tutorial and for the next class we're going to start working on this white space here for now we just have these things and they're not doing nothing special now but we're going to give life to all of these so we still have a lot of work to do so I really hope you liked the video and if you did please don't forget to leave that like uh, below and and if you didn't yet, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for the support and thank you for watching the videos. See you on the next one. Welcome back to the course. So here is where we left off on our last videos. And the, the, the goal for today is to build, let me open this image. Is to build this carousel here. So today we're going to learn something very, very, very exciting. Okay. Without further ado, let's do it. Uh, for now, this is what we have. A blank space here. Nothing special. Uh, I would like to change at least the color of this icon. Let's give it a blue or green color. Just to differentiate it. Let me zoom oops let me zoom in here so it will be easier for you guys to see so where do we have that icon where is that where is that here about so now i'll just do color then i'll give it colors dot 
let's try it with blue comment save it just to make it different let's I didn't really like the blue let's try a green color okay it's fine do I need to change the color of these icons mm, I'll just leave them like this I'll at least go here and change the settings color oops 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 I have to do color then colors dot let's give it a blue color does it make any sense I don't know uh, you guys will tell me if you like this or what but okay let's go let's go into the tutorial for today which is carousel um, I'm just arranging the train for us to work I would like to can you see this shadow here I would like to remove this I want this to be plain so in order to remove that you'll come in here to the up bar how is it elevation 0, 0.0 you see that now it's plain I like this better or if you want can give it 0 0.1 maybe just a little bit you can't really notice the difference but still I'll leave it 0 0.1 okay to build this carousel to build this carousel we'll need to get couple things ready uh, first of all let us go to Google and you write Carousel Pro this is it so main uh, all of the packages we are going to work with you just going to you just going to need to go to Google and write the name of the package or you can come directly to pubdirtlang.org and write the name of the package you go to installing then this is what you have to copy we copy this now we go back to our Android studio let me open up this for now I'll put it on full screen in here what do you do you have to come to this file the pub spec file and just under the SDK flutter you're going to paste this dependence and you, you have to click package get sometimes you may get some problems here you just click it again and hopefully it's going to work but this is not pro that, that problem is not related to us but okay we have no problem we have um, finished with exit code zero means everything is working perfectly so what are we going to do now if you can see uh, let me open the image here we have making use of images I told you guys to okay just have to click get dependencies ah now we have that problem what is it saying A dependency only might have one source sometimes you may have these kind of problems and most of the times I'm not really sure what's the matter so let's give it space and now we have a problem let's try to indent this
I don't really like this. Here, the way you organize the things you write is important actually. So most most of the times we get this kind of problems because of it, indenting and stuff. Let me try to cut do my package get. You see the problem is not related to us. Even though I removed that carousel pro, we still have the problem. Like the problem remains. Okay, at least now I just saved the file and I hit package get. Let's try to paste it again, but asserting the indenting here and do it package get. Everything is working perfectly. Okay, get update update dependencies. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. And okay, now it's working. Uh, you are going to face this kind of problems a lot with Flutter. And most of the times you're going to face, all of the times you're going to face it while working with the pub spec file. Uh, the structure of this file is very sensitive. Like, firstly, I didn't indent, like, do you see here where we have Flutter in the, that same column is, is, is where the carousel pro has to start so before i had written this right above this sdk flutter that's why i was getting that error it's just a structure problem hopefully i was able to find what was the matter and i hope if you guys find a problem like this you will solve it just like i did okay now this is done let's get back to the video now we are going to do the following we are going to do import package carousel slash carousel pro dot dart okay and for now this is all you have to do um let's come down here right above the return we are going to create a we oh before 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 we do this in flutter i was forgetting we, we, we will have to use these images these are the carousel images right so in flutter when, when we want to use local image local images or this asset images you have to do something we have to write the location of those images inside this public spec file again right so how do you do that you have to come over here and you'll type assets Make sure you indent it properly or else it's not going to work. You're going to write images. This first images is giving a reference to this folder, this directory. And then slash, the file we're going to use will start with C1, for example. C1 dot JPG. Package upgrade and see if it's going to work may take a couple seconds
so work it did now we're going to use all of these images so after this we are going to repeat the process again images slash now we're going to write m1 dot jpeg and you have to do this process for all of these images here but since I already have this and to spare us some time I'm going to open my notes and I'm going to copy this you just have to repeat the same process over and over again I'm just doing this to spare some time then now uh, we're going to do package upgrade wait for a couple seconds And here we have it okay so let us let us start working now now what are we going to do uh, we're going to create a special widget widget as I told you at the beginning is anything existing on the screen so we are going to create a special uh, a special widget we are going to call that widget image carousels and then we are going to implement or to use that widget inside of our list view okay i don't need to talk about the future let's just do it uh the first thing you are going to do when you want to create a widget you have to define the object has a widget then you give the widget name okay so it's going to be widget just giving a reference that here we're going to create an a variable or object of type widget then so here is supposed to be capital Then we're going to give image carousel, which is the name of the widget. Then we're going to give new container. And this is the actual, the actual widget. Right? For the container, we have to give height. So why are we giving height to the container when we implement this widget inside of the list view i'm going to explain to you guys why is it important to give this height and if you don't give it things are not going to work properly but about the 200 is just you can give any value you want i just tested it and i thought that 200 was a good size to give it okay so now we are going to give child new carousel you don't need to write the new it's just a matter of habit that's why i'm writing you can just write child carousel right then we are going to specify something called box box feed box feed cover uh, basically we are saying here that the images we are going to have inside of this carousel are supposed to fit the complete space of that carousel or that container right then we have another property called images 
and we give these square brackets and square brackets if you don't know we use them to specify that, that we are working with a list right so every time you see square brackets it's because we want to use a list of things here and what we want to use we want to use asset images asset images are basically these images which are stored inside of the application right we don't use them from any network or something like that and here we're going to provide the location of those images and the location is going to be images slash uh, c1 for example dot jpg because this is the first image now what I'm going to do is copy this and I'm going to paste it a couple times okay then to make things easier for us let us open the pub spec file and just come over here and copy this stuff you paste it here you come over here and repeat this process okay okay we're almost done just stay with me here guys just stay with me we only have two more to go we only have one more to go now oops I do not have the eye for both of these. I there, I here. I guess I'm repeating this. Am I? Yes, sir, I am. So let's just erase this. And this is the last one. We copy, I copy it, we come over here, we paste it, oops, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the noise, we paste it, and then we cut this and cut again. So, here we're just saying that we use a list of images which are going to come from our assets, right? And we still have a couple more properties. I can just write autoplay false. Why am I giving autoplay false? I don't want the images to be rolling automatically because that is going to specific specifically if you're using specifically if you're using the simulator, it's going to make your simulator kind of slow and stuff. So it's not a good thing to have. So I would advise you to write out autoplay false but at, at the beginning if you want to see what does what autoplay does you can just leave it like that then we are going to give animation curve and this is going to be equal to curves dot first out slow in basically the way the images are going to slide when they're coming in they're going to be slow when they're going out they're going to be fast then we are going to give animation duration for this we are going to provide duration firstly we have to give in which unity and for our case, we are dealing with milliseconds 
n thousand let us try to save this and see what's happening because i don't really like to write a bunch of code without testing it okay i guess i can do this And when you see the app, it seems like nothing has happened. Why? Uh, because of the type of changes we did, when you just do control save, it's not going to do nothing. You will need to rerun the app. Let's rerun it. Okay, let us stop it. And after this, oh. So stupid of me. I'm sorry, I forgot to include this inside of the body tag. Okay. Let us do that. That's not a problem. Mm. Here on our... The drawer finishes here. Then we're going to give body and for the body we're going to run a new list view inside of our list view we're going to give children and for the children we're going to give image carousel now let's run it here we have it So this is the height we specified inside of this column view over, where is it? Over here, the 200. Let me suppose we write true in here because most of these properties I gave, they only make sense when you're doing the autoplay. Just take a look, take a look, you see? And you still free to change this. All of these make sense in this case. So that's why I have this. I will just comment it out because you may need to use them on your apps. But I would advise you to put this on false. You can write through just to see what's going to happen, right? rerun the app here if you change the order of these the first image is going to change as well you see so you can just pick the image you like do it like this and it's going to be the first one now what can we do here is dot size and as you can see dot size is to change the size of these dots I will give 4.0 I like it now i'm going to give another property called indicator bg padding which is basically the padding of you will see what's going to happen let's give it eight Did you see and if we give something like six four for example okay you can even change the colors of the dots if you want you can give something like dot color
colors dot red control save it but I guess there's no sense on doing that I will leave it white okay so I really hope you did understand this and I hope you did enjoy the tutorial guys thank you very much for watching thank you very much for dropping the likes and supporting the channel and I really hope we all grow together this was our goal for today and we can happily say that we accomplished our goals so see you on the next one bye welcome back to the course uh, today we're going to do something quite special our task for today this I don't know if I'm going to make this a single video or part one part two it will depend on the length of the video but the goal is to produce this horizontal list view inside of our of our vertical list view okay a um, couple things I have to address uh, before we continue first of all is that I'm sorry for taking so long to up, uh, upload the videos I'm still I'm still trying to find a perfect schedule uh, now it's been hard uh, because I have exams I have to work with college stuff and I have to do this and that and that and I have to work with so many other things but that's not a problem I'll try to find a schedule at least upload two videos for uh, per week I, I know that that's not enough but I mean we'll try to see how can we handle this situation I'm so sorry guys and thank you for your patience with that being said let's go into the video uh actually this is not our app let me run it now this is the first version i did okay this may take a couple seconds just wait and here we go okay something isn't right here something isn't right here okay it's done now I just had to rerun the app here we have a carousel and now we are going to build the list view over here the first thing we're going to do is to let me zoom oops so it will be easy for you guys to see what's happening okay and here we're going to give a new padding const meaning constant edge insets all then let's provide 8.0 for this this is a padding with widget I guess that it's kind of self-explanatory right for this padding with widget we are going to provide a child it's going to be new text and let's just write um, categories and let me run this I have to disable my not my Facebook notifications here it's becoming annoying you see let us see the working of this padding edging sets if I were to remove this and put two and then control save it you see what's happening with the categories this is just providing the padding for that widget the, the padding we, we you can wrap uh, another types of widgets inside of a padding widget you are basically providing a padding outside that particular widget for our case the widget is the text widget 
categories and we were providing a, pad, a padding for that widget. Okay. Yeah, this is done. Let us comment. When the code becomes lengthy, it becomes very complicated to understand where is what. So commenting is a very, very, very good practice. If you want to troubleshoot your app, you can just try to read the comments and it's going to become very easy. So I would encourage you to do the same thing. Okay. Now, after this, we are going to provide uh, horizontal list view begins here. Let us work. I will need to put this on full screen for a while because now it's kind of required. Um, while programming an application, organization is something very, very important. So we cannot just put all of the components and all of the aspects of our application inside of this main uh, file. And even the contents we already have here inside of the main are very big. It's the best thing to do, is, it would be to separate the drawer widget to a separate file called drawer or something like that. And the carousel to a separate fi file called carousel or something like that. So when you're having problems with the carousel, instead of having to come here and searching for thousands, thousand lines of code, you can just go to that file. But okay, I'm not going to remove these. We already have those here, so let's just leave it. But we'll do something different for the horizontal list view. Uh, I'll create new package. We're basically creating a new directory on your folder. So don't worry about the name. We are going, we are going to call this components. Right? Inside of this package, I'll create a new file, Dart file, and I'm going to call this horizontal underscore list view. Okay. Here we have it. Uh, of course, we have to start importing Flutter material.dart there's no other go uh, let's go back to the main now I will have to import that file here all of the files are supposed to be included here uh, in our main file not actually all but all the required files okay so I will do one thing because some some imports some packages we are not creating like we'll just access them using the public spec file like the flutter material.dart or the carousel pro but some packages uh, we are going to create like this horizontal list view i'm going to create it now so to make things easy i'll just write i'll just comment here my own my own imports okay and we're going to import what import package oops and the name of the no the name of our directory here okay let me do one thing components 
uh, inside of component switching I'll just import it like this okay okay let us continue okay uh, well you know what actually this is not going to work um, I'm sorry okay we have to import package and we have to provide the name of the app then this is basically giving the, 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 the location of that package we will give a uh, shop app underscore toot depending on the name you give for your app but I would recommend you to give the same name so we don't run into problems but anyhow that's not a compulsory thing you can just pick a name horizontal list view now it's going to work yeah you have to write package then the name of the app we are basically giving the path here okay uh, this is done anything existing on this particular file will be will be accessed from the main file it, it will be has it will be like we have the the let's suppose we will define some classes inside of here we can just come and use them inside of this main file as if the classes are defined inside of the main file okay I'll write some code and that theory will become very very easy we're going to create a stateless widget STL and we're going to call that stateless e widget horizontal list okay so what is it a stateless widget why are we defining this as a stateless widget the point here le let me try to open up these and see if I can uh, I'll try to okay let me try to go over this app let's try let's see if it's going okay fortunately uh, what's the point for example this will never change will define this as t-shirts the state of this widget will never change ever and this also and this also but the home page uh, we have to define as a stateful widget because for one time the user will log in or will open the app and he will see this blazer first and this and this and this but let's suppose people buy this blazer and we don't have this blazer no more the next time the user will use the app will not have the same configuration here okay i hope i'm making these things easy to understand a stateful widget when it's a stateful means that the states the state of that particular widget are going to change somehow stateless are not going to change okay let's go back to our app okay so inside of this we are going to return container okay for this container we are going to give height of 80 then I'm going to provide a child for the container and we're going to give list view okay now we have to do something different we'll write scroll direction axis dot horizontal why because we, we, we're dealing with a horizontal list view we want the scroll to be done horizontally and now let me try we can minimize this just for now bring it over here so we'll see on live action what's happening mm. we have to provide children and what can we do just to test this let's try to write new icon icons dot help whatever I'll just copy 
go to the next one and paste it and paste it we have this we, we just want to test what's going to happen here okay uh, let us come over here and write where is our here horizontal list view begins here so okay we'll come over here and we'll write horizontal list do you guys see what's happening here we're just calling that list uh, we're just calling the horizontal list class inside of this main let me try to reboot this and see what's going to happen and chara it's working maybe it doesn't really seem like it's working but it's working we have this arranged horizontally I mean now it's not possible to scroll it like this because of the number of icons that we have but just to test it you can just come over here down and control V control V control V okay and if you try to scroll you can see that it's working we have a horizontal list view inside of a vertical list view so we already know how to nest list views that's a major thing to know guys but for now i only did this for the testing purposes so let me just erase it and do something serious because that's not what we want um now we are going to do something else I'm going to come outside of this I'm going to create another class no okay a state less widget just have to write STL category and this giving reference to a specific category right inside of this category we are going to do something we are going to create uh, variables instance variables we are going to give final oops string okay image location then we're going to give final string image caption we created these two variables and now what are we going to do here we are going to create a constructor and we are going to provide these parameters inside of this constructor oops this dot image location this dot image caption okay let me try to explain what's happening here uh, probably most some of you don't really understand what just happened uh, we created a specific class called category because inside of these categories we are going to have singular categories I mean we have categories then we're going to have t-shirts dresses pants pant is a category inside categories so we are creating a state a stateless uh, a stateless widget so we will just use this state state stateless widget as the base for building our uh, specific widgets over here okay so we are creating two variables inside of the class one is called image location because the 
if you see these are not icons let me try to open it if you take a look these are not icons these are images I downloaded we have here the image and we have the caption so this is basically this image location and image caption if you don't create a class a specific class for this you would have to create a specific widget provide the image location the caption then do this over and over and over and over again you create a class and all of these are going to be basically objects of this class so you don't have to write this code man multiple times you just create objects of the class category and you're good to go the magic of object oriented programming okay now what are we going to do we are going to return something we don't want to return a container here we want to return a padding then I'm going to give const edge insets all I'll try to give it uh, 2.0 for now I don't know how it is going to come but okay then we have to provide child and our child is going to be our inkwell I already talked about inkwell but basically inkwell is a widget which makes any widget any child of the inkwell widget is a tappable widget if we create this carousel as an inkwell if you tap something is going to happen right this is why we make this is how we did this because these are not buttons this is just the text and this is just the icon but now is a button because of the inkwell widget okay uh, so we have here inkwell we have specific properties for the inkwell one of them is going to be on tab and we are going to provide an empty function for now afterwards we are going to give the implementation for this then what else do we do we'll do here child and has child of the inkwell I guess I will do this as a list tile list tile here you have it and inside of the list tile I'm going to give title and for the title we are going to give asset image meaning that we want to use an image presence on present on our as on the assets of the application right and here we are going to give image location okay then after this what do we have we have subtitle and we're going to give text I'll probably have to edit these properties but let's just see let's just see how things are going to come up text caption and what now let us try to create something with this uh, to make this possible we'll have to open up the pub spec file seems like we are having an issue here because I didn't put a semicolon here okay it's done uh, let me put this on full screen if you go to your image folder you have cats and cats I'm not talking about the animal cat but we're talking about categories so we want to make these images usable inside of our app we already know what to do 
we are going to come over here I'm just going to copy this I'll copy it oops oops I'll paste it let me zoom it then we're going to have cats slash let us start with t-shirt dot png and we're going to do command save then let's just package upgrade wait for a couple seconds Okay, no problem whatsoever. We can just continue. Uh, then, because we already have that, image is working perfectly. Now we are going to come over here and we'll just write Category and for the category, we have to give image location and it's going to be images slash no, 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 to make sure I will copy you to make sure I'm giving the right location. Okay, and here for the image location, we'll give images slash cat slash t shirt dot png image caption. I'm going to give shirt. Let me run this and see what happens. Okay. Let us see our application. Jan, 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 jan. And we do have a problem. It seems like our app just didn't update. So I'll stop the app and I will restart it. Try to boot. Because sometimes we have this kind of problems. We have to reboot. We have to start from zero, right? So let's do that just now. Okay, let's start the app and see what's going to happen. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm. Huh. Now I see we do have a problem. Let me open up you and try to understand what's happening. Mm. The way Flutter shows you the errors is kind of scary, right? You see all of these lines. Okay. The following assertion was strong during box constraint for an infinite width. This is going to have infinite width. The way I gave this. To solve this problem, we can do one thing. Let us come over here first. And here I will. Okay, I don't need to do that. I can do it like this. Wrap with a new widget. And that widget is going to be a container widget. Now, we are going to provide a width for this container of 
100. You're basically giving limitations to the container, right? Because we are, uh, when you have this kind of widgets, one inside of another, like a list view inside of a list view or column, you have to provide this kind of constraints, like how wide is it? What's the height? Okay. And for the image, I'll go something like width of 100 also and height of 80.0 let me organize the code command option shift L enter let me try to stop the app again and run it from zero and see what's going to happen just wait a second Ta-da! Here we have it. That was the problem. Uh, the problem is that here we didn't have this container to provide certain constraints on our widget, especially when you're dealing with horizontal list view. So I gave that the width of the container is of 100 pixels and more than that is not possible. That's why now we have the image. Okay, now uh, if you take a look, you will see that something doesn't seem right. This t shirt here is not well, very good aligned or badly aligned. I can write it's not for here. Uh, how can we do this? How can we do this? Let me cut the text widget for now. I'll give a container. I love containers. Alignment. I'm going to give alignment dot top center and I'm going to give child. I will paste this text widget. Oops. And I have a problem here. Control save it. Take a look. Jara, it's done. Now, what are we going to do? Let me just copy this and paste for a couple times. Control save it. Here we have, but the name somehow is gone. But we just have to run the app again. We are having a small problem here. Okay, this is all right. Mm, let me see what's happening. Z, control Z. We save this. Oh, that's a strange problem. Somehow it's gone now. Okay, no problem whatsoever. Ah, this is a simulator problem. Don't worry about this uh, text sometimes disappearing. 
okay uh now the task is to change these images here and to do that we'll come here we'll provide dress.png We have dress.png. We have formal.png. I have here informal.png. We have shoe.png. jeans.png and finally accessories.png you can control save this everything is working properly and hope for the best <coughs> I'm sorry <clears throat> It will take a couple seconds, but okay. Okay, it's done. So now it's time for us to see the magic of the thing. Here, you only have to come for the category and write. dress.png and for the caption we're going to give dress and it's done let's just do something like this so it will be easier for us then you come down here you'll write jeans dot png and for the caption i'm going to give pants you control save it and it's done just like that it's like magic then you're going to give formal Formal What is in informal? Okay. I don't really like this problem of the caption disappearing when you go off screen but I'll try I'll try I'll try to find out exactly what's happening because we have the original application over here and for that one we don't have that problem whatsoever So, maybe, oops, oops, oops. Maybe there's something I'm forgetting to do over here that I have to. Let me try uh, maybe to decrease the, if we do text, Uh, if we do style the new text style and try to do font size 
something like 12 you still have the problem okay no problem I'll try I'll try I'll try to see what's what's happening with this we will solve this no problem that's not a big deal actually it's just something annoying uh, but anyhow you already have it here arrange it the way you want there's no problem about that okay so see you guys on the next one for the next video we're going to solve this small problem we're having here with the caption uh, sometimes disappearing but not, that's not a big deal thank you for your time thank you for watching my videos don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe see you on the next one choose uh, welcome back We'll start off this video with some good news. Uh, I already have the GitHub link for this project, so you can go and access it because I was getting so many complaints to upload this to GitHub and I have it now. Uh, our goal for today is to create this. I am sure that this will take more than a single video to make, so uh, we will see until what point, what extent is it possible. To work and we will do that um second thing i would like to know is that i'm trying to keep a goal of uploading at least two videos per week i know that it's a very low rate of uploads but ah i'm still trying to find a way to coordinate all of this stuff okay okay with that being said let's go to the code now uh here's where we left off let me try to run this program uh, meanwhile I can organize some stuff here let me delete this close these and uh, let's see let's see let's see usually it takes so uh, some time to open so it's quite a normal thing no reason to panic uh, <laughs> this right here is not good let me see what's happening I guess that maybe I have horizontal list let me open where is the file Components horizontal list. Here we have it, but it didn't load all of the files. Let me restart the application. Okay, all set. Now, our goal for today is to create the grid view here and all of that good stuff. Okay, let us start working then. Uh, ah, we still have this problem to solve. I didn't give me time. Like these names sometimes disappear. Uh, but since it's not a major problem, I will solve this. Let us focus on the goal for this current video. Mm, okay. let us work now okay how are we going to do this first let us come in here let me zoom in to make sure you guys to make sure this is visible for you too I, I hope I'm not over zooming it but anyways let me copy this and uh, paste it over here what's happening it's kind of slow I'm not liking it let me see what I can do here this click sound is way too loud I know that you guys can hear that I'm trying to minimize this app so I can show you 
Okay, this is what I wanted. Uh, you see, for this app, we don't have that problem, that disappearing problem. So I'll just uh, take a look over here and see what's missing or what's the difference. But for now, let us focus on our app. Okay. Uh, here I'll write. Present products. Somehow that's not enough. Let's give it twelve for the padding. Still, this is way too close. For this, you just have to increase here the padding value. Let us give it fifteen. Still, I'm not happy. Let me give it 20. Okay, I guess that this is good enough. Now let us start with the actual work. Actual work. Um, I'll comment here. Grid view. Oh, okay. We are going to use a container. For this container, we are going to give an attribute called height, and for the height, we are going to give 320. And these values, I I tested them that I, I tested them before. That's why I'm just giving I'm giving them like that, you know. And uh, after this, child. And I'll create a class called product. I will get an error because we didn't define this class here yet, but that's not a big deal. You can do that just in a matter of seconds. Mm, okay. I don't want to define it here. So to make our lives easier, let us open. And don't worry about these errors. It's simply because we didn't define this class product, but we're using it. I will go over here to the components. We'll create a new Dart file. And let's call it products. Uh, it's, it's basically just asking if I want to uh, if I want to add this this file to git and obviously I do I'll just write yes make life easier for all of us okay let me import I guess that now you know what's happening import package there do you have to do this every time and we'll create a class here and the class is going to be a stateful class and we're going to call this class product okay okay um, before we're done with this we'll come back here and we'll just copy this line We'll paste it. Slash products dot dart. Okay, and the error now is gone. Now we are going to work on a new file, which is this file. Control save. Nah, not yet. I don't need to do that. Okay, how are we going to do this? 
uh, here we are going to create a list of products then we are going to display that list of products inside our grid view this way of coding which I'm going to show to you guys now is going to make it very easy when we go to implement the the when you're going to extract to extract the information from <clears throat> from a database like firebase or something like that so i'm just making this actually now we're doing this locally but i'm making it ready for us to use a database because afterwards we need to use a database to do all of this stuff so if you guys are familiar with json files uh you know that they come usually <clears throat> in a list format right so this is what we're going to use here so come over here we'll create this as a var and we'll call it product list then we have it okay I will just put the semicolon here inside of this product list we are going to create maps uh, if you're new to this concept, uh, it basically means list, as the name says, is a group of things. Like we are grouping different, uh, gr different, different things together. Um, inside the of, and a map works more or less like a list. We have some basic difference for that, but it's pretty the same thing. At the end of the day, like the goal of both maps and lists are grouping things together. So with that being said, let's create some maps inside of that list. To create a map, you use these curly braces. And inside of this, we are going to give attributes. Like we have key value, they call these key value pairs. Like we are going to create a key and we're going to assign a value for that key. So every time we want to access the value, specific specific value we can just use the key if you if you have worked with JSON files I know you know what I'm talking about because most of them are going to come like this and firebase also we're going to work with JSON files basically okay so we are going to create a value called name We are going to create a key, sorry, uh, a key called picture, picture, we are going to create a key called old price. And finally, price. I guess that this is enough for the product description. For the name, here is where we are going to provide the name of the, 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 the particular product. And we can give, we can give, sorry, blazer. For the picture, we are going to give the location where that specific picture is at. For us, it's images slash products. Slash. Uh, I'm giving the location of these, right? Images folder product then we can give anything let us open the pubspec.yelm file to see what we have there okay we have a small problem because let me see which image is this one this wasn't supposed to be here
okay, I just realized that there are a couple images missing here for that file. So what am I going to do? This wasn't supposed to be on images, on products, because these are not products. I will upload a folder with the images and I'll leave the link in the description below. So now I'll just pause the video and do that upload. So when you see the video, you can just go and download that folder, okay? Oh, sorry guys, I just stopped the video to check. Actually, we do have the, the images. I thought that this di directory was open and here's the file, the, the, like the, the product folder. You don't need to download nothing, you have it. If you download this images file, the, I left link at the first video, on the first video description, so we have the file. Sorry, my bad. What we have to do now is not down is not downloading this products folder because we have it. It's just do what I believe we already know. I'll just write images slash products slash let me find one blazer one. dot jpeg okay no big deal whatsoever uh, let me just do another one with you guys we don't need to write all of that again copy Now we are going to put here dress one. Dot JPEG. We are not going to give packages get. No problem whatsoever. We can open the images to see. I mean, this is Blazer two. This is Blazer one. This is dress one. Okay. Uh, here we are going to give the images location where is that let's go to the pop spec file let's just copy this because I don't want to write it over and over again Uh, for the old price, just give anything. You can give one twenty. And for the new price, you can just give uh, eighty five. Okay. So what now? Now we can do the following. We can copy this map. And uh, let us create a second one. You can create as many as you want, or at least uh, you count the number of images you have here and you create that many maps. Here we can write red dress. Then here for the location, we're going to give dress one for the prices let us give it a hundred dollars and now it's only 50 half the price okay uh, we can do this multiple times but I know that you guys can do that for yourselves what will I do now is for now come outside of this let us create a stateless class 
we are going to call that class just put stl stateless oops stateless class and we're going to call and we're going to call that stateless class single underscore proud single product I know that maybe now you don't really get what are we doing and it's kind of complicated but just bear here with me and you will get to understand what's happening after the whole thing is done I will take the time to explain to you guys what's happening let us create some variables in here inside of our stateless class and we're going to create final the first variable is going to be product name let us create another variable final prod picture final prod what else all the price and finally we'll create final oops prod price uh, misspelled this price okay let me give prod for this the first one just to make everything uniform uh, now we're going to create a constructor And here we're going to do the following this dot product name oops it is outside I'm supposed to be in here this dot product name comma this dot product picture comma this dot product old price comma this dot product price what are we doing here uh, we'll make use of this single product class uh, we are putting these variables inside of the constructor is basically a way to make comp compulsory to use to provide values for these variables every time we call the class single product these variables the final product name the product name uh, final price and stuff are going to be properties of this class basically he this is a user defined widget we are creating our, our own widget called single product well guys i guess that this video has been long enough i will have to stop here and we'll continue uh from here on the next one see you back to the part two of the video uh let us go straight to the code here's where we left off for our last lesson and what we're going to do now is here we need to return something we are going to return grid view builder we have couple errors here what is the matter let me try let me come here and solve these problems
Okay, we'll still we'll still come, don't worry. Um uh, inside of these we are going to add some properties. One of them is called item count. Then the item count or the number of items we're going to have on this grid view builder is going to be equal to the product list length. Fair enough. And here for the grid delegate, we are going to give new and the name is very lengthy. Silver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count cross axis. So we're basically saying that the cross axis or the number of columns of our grid view is going to be equal to two. Okay. Uh, you press command shift L to organize your code. Item builder. For the item builder, we are going to give. We can come down here. Build context is equal to context. Context is basically where the widget sits inside of the app. Like where is it positioned? Int index. And this is this is a function and this function is going to return single product okay in here we are going to have We'll start off with the product name and the product name is going to be equal to the product list. Oops. Index. Name. Then we're going to have can you see that this is a, as I told you, this is a user defined widget. This is our own widget. We created this class down here. We can set our product picture being equal to product list index. Oops. picture make sure these names are given here are the same here name picture and stuff then we're going to have here product all price again the same thing product list oops index all price And finally, we're going to have product price being equal to product list index price. And just to make sure we give these correct names, name, name, picture, picture, old price, old price, price, price okay for this function here it's done now let us what is the error now let me try to okay 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 this wasn't supposed to be here it was supposed to be 
Where was it supposed to be? Bottom, bottom, bottom. Okay, sorry for the para para. I was just singing to think. Okay, done. The problem is this wasn't well arranged. Now, uh, let me organize this code and start working with the single product. Uh, now, let us work with the single product, as I said. Uh, but before we do anything, let's just test if all of this code is actually working. And to test, I'll just write uh, text because I hate to write a bunch of code without testing it. Sometimes or you write 100 lines and then things don't work and it's not nice. Uh, I'll write test and inside of the, here, we'll write test. But it's missing something. I hope you guys spotted that thing child text test you control save this for now we can do this like that to make our work easier and I actually do like like do like working like this uh, let me just arrange this properly Okay. Okay. As you can see, we have here test, test. In other language, successful. Because we, we only gave two elements to our product list, and we, we said that the grid view, grid view builder has to have the same length as the length the same number of components as the length of product list and we have two and here we only have test test mean means that things are actually working uh, what are we going to do here is remove all of this and I'm going to remove all of this and I'm going to return a card widget Then we are going to provide child hero. For the object tag, we are going to give product name or prod name. And for the child, uh, for now, I'm going to give material widget. And for the material widget also I'll provide a child which is going to be an inkwell as you know to make these things tappable tappable okay and for the inkwell we are going to give on tap property and for now we are going to just provide an empty function and finally, we are going to give a child for the inkwell widget. Which is going to be a grid tile. Grid tile. Okay. Uh, for the child widget, it can't be null, but okay. I'm we are going to come and work with this afterwards. For now, I can just provide footer. And this is the footer of the card. When the card, when the, 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 the whole process is done, I will get to explain you guys uh, what what is what in here. Okay, for the footer, we're going to give a container. And inside of this container, we're going to provide color is going to be colors 
dot white and we're going to provide the child for our footer and our child is going to be a list tile and uh, on our list tile for the leading we're going to give text prod name and I can add some style to this I'll give uh, sorry font weight is going to be font weight dot bold let me save and see what happened uh, okay we have a problem here I'll rerun this and try to understand the problem Ah, okay, okay, okay. Simple, simple problem. This is the problem. Because I just left child is now. Uh, because I knew that I would come, but okay. To solve this, let us just write here. <laughs> Image, sorry. I'm a little bit cold. Image assets. And inside of this, we're going to provide prod picture. Okay. And after that, we're going to give feed is equal box fit cover. and charan as you can see now we have this image we have here the footer which is white for now and we have this uh, blazer the product name as we gave here product name okay i guess that now it's starting to uh, become easy for you guys to understand why we gave this uh product name and uh all of that stuff okay <clears throat> let me change here i'll write white 70 which is, has a bit of transparency into it so we have this nice look let me rearrange the code okay <clears throat> I'm sorry guys uh, where were we leading okay uh, after leading we can give another property which is coil which is called title this is a list view property called title and for the title we are going to give text and here I'm going to write product price control save it to see what happens I guess I know the problem this is not a string so I have to do this and then in here we have to do where's the backslash no no um dollar sign and uh, we have to do backslash dollar sign actually and here we're supposed to give the product name okay let us try again
Oh, sorry. Product price is what we had to give. Let us try again. And as you can see, it's working. Uh, you give a backslash. When you give a backslash, it will not validate this first dollar sign. That's why we have this here. And we only use the second one. Let me try to erase this and show you what's going to happen. If I erase, I only have 20... 85 here for example, but let us suppose I want to put the dollar sign also But the dollar sign has a specific meaning if I only put dollar sign is not going to work That's why I put backslash to make sure that the dollar sign is not valid so I can just use it as a string Okay Let us add some style into this Style uh, text style colors colors dot red or red accent okay let us try with this one okay let me increase the font weight to font weight dot this one w800 i think it's good i think it's good and now uh what else do i have to do let me come under here and give a subtitle I'll just copy this to avoid wasting time. I'll write here the product old price. Um, what else? Here I don't want a red, I want black would do and then I still want to do something decoration let me arrange the code and for the decoration I'm going to give text decoration dot line true okay we have we have an error where is it let me put this on full screen where is the error where is the error expected an identifier where exactly okay here I had two commas let us see whether it did work or not in fact it did so here you have it ladies and gentlemen now your task is just to uh, add as many pictures as you can and for the next one we are going to uh, give some actions to these images when we click on them but for now they are perfectly working thank you for watching guys don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe see you on the next one hello you wonderful people it has been a while and i know you missed me because i missed you too first of all say i'm so sorry guys i had to make you wait for i guess two months 
just to upload a video but hopefully as i told you i was having some problems some issues related to college life and you know the student life sometimes you just have to focus on one thing but okay the good news is i am back and hopefully i am back for good so let us start coding this is where we left off and this is very 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 far away but uh, uh, the first thing I'm going to do today is one of the subscribers, I forgot his name, he, 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 he told me on the comment section that, the, do you see like when we do this, the name used to disappear. He told me that we just have to go to the horizontal list and change the width or height, I don't know, of the container from 80 to hundred so let us try it i didn't try i didn't have the time to try it actually okay let me try to put this so this is the here's the thing hopefully because you are a good coder i hope you did as i did commenting and all of the stuff so we know that we want this horizontal list i just have it here horizontal list and when you want to open this specific class you just click command on mac or control on windows control and just press and it will take you to the class so you don't have to search your files let me zoom in uh here we have it okay here i have 100 and here i have I'll put 100, I had 80, and I'll put 100, I'll save it. Broom, 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 broom. Let us try. <gasps> the magic happened. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry for that, guys. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Actually, I just, I just, I just forgot to, I just forgot it, the, the name of the subscriber, but big shout out to him big shout out to him big shout out to him this wasn't a problem it just we just had to change the height of the container from 80 to 100 i i guess 80 was too small but now it's everything back to normal let us start coding uh today what are we going to do we're going to make these things here work we want to do so that when you press the images over here you get this thing working actually we do have a few images only two i would recommend you to put some more like six because you will be able to see what happens when you scroll it up and down okay okay let's go back to this uh how are we going to do this i guess i can close we can close this i'm not going to use it no more oh let us start working now okay this class or so this widget is product so you just have to open products and over here let me just open the code so oops i didn't want to minimize and i didn't want to show you my batman mm. and this is not the project oh I am sorry guys. Did I close it? Okay, I just closed the project. I will have to open it again. Um just a second, just a second, just a second. Just a small second. I'm so sorry for this. I didn't want to close it. it just happened that I closed and I won't edit this part because today I'm too lazy to do that. Shop up tutorials let me open it okay i guess it is open now okay here we have it back and running uh what i wanted to do was this okay let us start working uh, the first thing we are going to do let's suppose you are in your main file and you're trying to find like 
you are trying to figure out which widget is that one the products I just hope you did as I did and you did a whole lot of commenting so you can see that here we have grid view representing that grid view and here we have products you just click command and press and you'll come to this file okay how are we going to make this thing work that's simple let's zoom in to make sure you guys are seeing what's happening I will just erase these and I'll do something like this I I hope you guys are familiar with arrow functions but I will just writing these let's suppose x plus y that this is nothing related to flood that I'm just explaining writing this expression here is the same as writing this and then writing return and then writing uh, x plus y right so using arrow functions is just a quicker way to do this stuff all right okay let's go so we'll do we're basically saying that this on tab we're going to return something okay and this is called it is called navigator dot off context yeah basically going to as I told you many times uh, context is basically where the widget is located in the app the 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 the, the location saying like that push what are we saying let's suppose we are on our main page if we are on our main page and the user presses the widget the specific widget which are we write, writing this function for we are going to push something above it uh let me i'll try to make this easy for you guys because i love you guys so this is like that what are we trying to say this is the actual context of this widget if i press on it i want to push something i want to imagine this as a stack right where at the top of the stack we have this page when we click on this image we are going to have something coming over the current page or the, the, the main page or the home page for that case yeah this is what, what what are we doing here push what are we going to push um let us create the actual page which are we going to push mm, don't worry about this error we have here components how about we create a page called we'll, first we'll create a folder which is a package and we're going to call that package pages because we're going to have many many pages so we are going to group them together it's going to be very easy for us to access them in the future we have your pages right inside of the pages let me create a new dart file make sure you're creating a dart file and we're going to call this product details notice that you, you don't have to write dot dart or something because you already mentioned that you're creating a dart file every time you create a file every time every single time in flutter you'll need to do this package flutter material dot dart okay uh, for now let us create let me zoom in let us create a stateful widget we are going to call this widget product details with capital with capitals 
is a it's a good practice to write class names with capitals okay so we created this widget called product details what are, what we want to do now we want to call this widget which is a page we want to call this when we press that button uh, let us go back to the button and we're going to push new material page route okay we're going to push new material page from the context and here you know okay 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 we are going to write new um, sorry page details right uh, we are going to get an error now but don't worry about this why because we didn't include this widget or this class inside of the main file so to do that let's come here inside of this current file not the main file and let us import package shop up to pages product details and now we have it let's go down there to see what's the problem what is happening probably a semicolon oops probably a semicolon oops <laughs> let me erase this stuff here let me go back here and find the name of the class product details okay let me copy to make sure that I'm using the same name context I'll write here new oops new control V product details okay we're still having the error but a simple thing to do is to do nothing because we don't have it no more okay <clears throat> small recap what's happening here and if you don't know how I'm indenting or reorganizing the code just press command alt shift L or control shift alt L at the same time okay let us understand what's happening we are saying that how about I minimize this so you guys can see what's happening how about that what are we saying well, uh, we're saying the following thing if the user clicks on this widget what we want it to do is navigator.context.push we're basically saying that we want to uh, load another page or we want to push something above our current page we want to put another page above this one right then new material page route uh, builder now here we're supposed to exp to specify what's that page or what's the widget we, we are going to call which is a page in this case so here we're basically specifying we are calling this is a function it takes the context the 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 the, the location of the widget the actual position of the widget as an argument context and it's going to return the new page which we are going to call or the widget we are which we are calling and that widget is product details I really hope I'm making this simple and easy for you guys to understand and in case I'm not feel free to ask anything in the comment section right uh, let us try to save this and see if it is working or not and it is working now it's black because we didn't define nothing
now it's just black okay guys uh i don't know how long have i been talking here but probably this video already took too long so for the next one we are going to start designing this page like when you click on it and it loads a new page what is the user going to see right and hopefully i will upload i will upload videos daily and don't worry about this black screen this means successful if you get this because the thing is working you're just getting black because the class we, which we are calling we didn't define nothing related to the ui we just have is just returning a container and this container has nothing but okay for the next video we are going to start designing this page i really hope you did like the videos and don't forget to hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit that like don't forget to share don't forget to comment see you on the next one bye people welcome back uh from where we left off on our last video we we're actually able to do something like this click on a product and get this black page and i told you that's not an error it just means you did everything right and everything is working right okay i hope you like my new batman wallpaper but okay that's not related to the video but let's go oh so here we have the codes to do that let's go back like this reload the app and as you know I like to put this oops and as you know I like to put this like here so we don't have to minimize and maximize this every time hmm so I have some like this let us code coders let us code so what now uh, we want to make that other page work and as you know we created we created this package we call the package pages and inside pages we have product details right now we'll do I don't I'm I'm kind of lazy so I don't want to work too much so what I'm going to do is okay let's start with things we're going to create a scaffold here let me zoom create scaffold widget then we'll have the app bar and we'll just copy the definition of our app bar here where is it where is it we have the app bar here just come to the main and copy it it's going to be basically the same so i just don't want to write this all over again where am i going to pass this oh that's not the right file okay uh we have the app bar here let us do this okay let us go through this just to make sure we are on the same page so we have here scaffold will return a bar elevation 0 0.1 basically means that the shadow is going to be of 0 0.1 background color red is the color of the app title text is the te title that's going to appear in the text bar and these two uh the buttons let us just reload this and see if it's here we have magic okay guys here's the thing uh let me explain while showing you i guess it's simpler like that we have here the app bar as i told you uh fash app is the name of the app we have here fash app and we have these two buttons over here okay 
uh now this is done we are going to define the body and for the body we're going to give a new all this view this is what we want we want to be able to scroll over the body oh uh, and then we're going to give children widgets and the first ch children child that we're going to create here is a container okay uh, if you write new then container it's going to help you somehow with parentheses and stuff and for this container we are going to give a height of 300 and then we are going to provide a child for this container but for now let's just give it a color to see what are we doing um, color colors dot black for example okay so this is what we have this is what are we trying to build so we can go back now you click on this and here we are going to place an image right so for the image uh I hope my, 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 my teachings or my pace is not very fast and you guys are able to understand and in case you're not able to understand feel free to notify me okay uh, for the image we're going to do good thing actually I may just end up adding more more items to our app only to not very attractive look wise uh, we'll use a grid grid tile so because I don't want to do this again and most of the times when you'll be working on project not just related to flutter you will be doing this a lot like just copying and pasting copying and pasting because it makes things easier you don't have to write code that you already have so we have this grid tile and how are we going to integrate this into that <laughs> I guess I cannot just copy this over there. It's not going to be very nice. But anyhow, um, let's try doing something like this. As you can see, before I continue with that, when we click over here, here we want to get this image, like this image here. We want to get this title, this new price and the old price. We want to get them both over here so how are we going to do that uh, come back to the product details right and as you can see we are passing all of these properties like the product name uh, product price product old price and all of this stuff so here on this file we are going to create variables final variables you can call this product detail just to differentiate name let's cop copy this and paste it like three times paste it oops oops, oops paste it paste it so here we're going to have product detail price oh I can put 
new let me put new price product detail old price Mm, let me see what else do we have here picture product detail picture All right. uh, now we're going to do this we're going to create as we have over here we created a constructor which makes an obligation for us to pass these values all every time we call this particular widget. So we'll create the constructor here. I'm going to call the constructor product details. And we are going to give here this dot product name. Let me put this down. Then we're going to give this dot product new price. This dot product old price. I'm going to give this dot product picture. Okay. Uh, it's saying that we have a mistake over function, but it must be provided. Um, I don't know what did I do now. I don't know where do I have this error. Okay, it was missing a semicolon. Uh, so what now? Every time we call this particular widget the product details, we will have to pass these values. Okay. This may sound a little bit complicated, but just take a time. You can go back to the video you can watch it over and over again so you can understand the concepts and i'm trying to make it very simple for you guys to understand with no problem so here we are making call of the product detail product details widget or class is basically the same thing so what are we going to do now is set here product detail name so do you see that this comes now has a property of the product detail class because we defined here for this constructor that we have to pass these values, the product detail name, old price, new, new price, and product detail picture. So coming back here, we have product detail name. It's going to be product name. So we are saying that this value, the product name, is going to be passed for the product detail name. So when we call this new function, We'll just have the product name here. All right. Uh, now uh, we're going to give product new picture, new price, sorry, is equal to product price. product old price is equal to product old price and finally we have a uh, product picture is equal to product picture again so uh oh this is price wait a second the picture here you are okay what is happening guys here uh, I've been not commenting for a while let me just leave a comment so here we are passing the values of the prop the Mm. 
to the product details page okay uh, now we're not able to see nothing too special yet but no problem we can still do this okay when we come back here we have this container here we can do this oops oops let me just delete this and I'll write here uh, child I want to use a grid tile okay here we're going to provide the color colors the white to make sure that the <laughs> I'm having a mistake here let me just check how I define the product tile here product tile uh, container we can define the color inside of the container not the other way around so no problem let me just delete this oops 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 I'm deleting too much and we're going to define a container in here okay we're going to define the color of this container as colors dot white and we're going to define a child for the container is going to be image assets and inside of these see you may be tempted to just write here product picture and if you do let me try right you see we don't even have that option to write directly product picture and why is that as you see here this product detail state is a subclass of the state class this is a child class okay so if you want to access the value of those we have to do widget giving a reference to the base class or the parent class dot product picture okay uh, let me go back over here let me refresh this and see how well is it working I feel like I have to refresh it like this okay let us see Ta -da! and we have magic now we have image here do you see yes you do okay I don't know how long uh, I don't know what's the length of the video so for today I'll just stop over here and tomorrow we'll continue uh, putting the title and the pri new price, old price, the buy button, add to cart and like and this kind of stuff okay okay I hope you really did enjoy it. sorry sorry I have problems with the length of the videos usually they are too lengthy sorry for that I hope you guys enjoyed this as I told you I'm back and I'm back for good See you on the next one, lovely people. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to leave your comment and support because that's why I do this. See you on the next one. Uh, so, now, let us do something else. This wasn't supposed to be title. I'm going to provide leading this and the difference is uh, when you have title and leading leading will be at the left side of the left leftmost side or the most left side whatever but leading will be to the left and uh, title will be kind of to the middle uh, so you'll understand in a second why I did that because here for the title I'm going to give you row 
And for the row, I'm going to provide, um, what is it going to be? Let us use to expand, exp oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. First, I have to give children widget. Then here, I'm going to give expanded widget, meaning that it's supposed to take up all of the space available in that row, par particular row. And inside of this, I'm going to give text. You can give new, the new keyword is optional, but I like to use it because the IDE helps me more when I use it. That's why. New, I'm going to give here widget dot old price. And I have a problem, but I know what's the problem product details old price the problem here is that I'm supposed to do this child okay so I'll just copy this paste it here and I'm going to give dot product details new price and if I control save this This is so scary. Okay, but the problem is simple here. This is defined as int, and, and here I'm giving it as a, a string. So you're just supposed to do this. You're just supposed to do. Let me just remove this. I'll do something like this and something like that. No, paste it. Oh, I may need to do this, and I'll close this stuff here. Okay, for that, I'll just copy this and I'll come down here. I'll paste it. Let us give some space. Mm, delete here and just write product new price control save it Ta-da! it's working as it was supposed to okay so I guess that we're starting to get the design we want mm, what else can I do here let us give some style to this stuff. We can first off come here to this and we'll provide your style. And here we can give you can give text style. Let's start with the font. Okay. Font weight. And I'm going to give a font weight dot bold control save it as you see here we'll have this bold I don't know if the size is good if you want to we can do something like this font size and I'm going to give uh, let's try 16 Point zero. Okay, it's big enough, I guess. And for the second one, we are supposed to give style as well. And I'm going to give this first off. We can give okay text style. We can give it a style of start with the color. Let's try to give it a gray colors.gray and here we can still give decoration and how does it work I guess is uh, I'm forgetting something decoration dot no 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 I'm trying to put a line into this 
text decoration. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, this can happen sometimes when you forget how. But since we are not machines, let's just go back to our front page. If I'm not mistaken, I have this on my product. And for the products, we have here. What do we want? This is what we want. Text decoration. Dot line through. This is what I'm trying to do. Oh, uh, so. I'm supposed to delete this. Text decoration line 2 this is what I want let's control save this okay I hope it's visible enough let us put a dollar sign in front of this so to do that you will use a backslash dollar sign control save it good enough uh, let us come down here do the same thing if you don't use the dollar the backslash is going it, it's not going to work properly it's going to give you an error so when you're using let us try first you see you have this error here why is it so because the dollar sign is a predefined character and if you want to use it in another way other than the predefined you use the backslash it's kind of to invalidate the symbol okay so anyhow uh, okay I will now do style oops style text style and I'll just need to do font I will do font bold and I'll do color then I'll do colors dot let us give a red for this one Chara, and you're starting to have something nice uh, I still want to change something let, let me treat let me give it a white 70 so we can oh uh, not not here not here I'm supposed to give it here okay let us give it a nine white 70 so we can get this kind of transparent background if I may or if you wish you can just give it white and cut the image off but okay I'll just leave this like that uh, so now what next uh, let us add something uh, we'll come over here we have the container and then down here I'm going to have uh, and inside of that row I'm going to have children and inside of the children I'm going to have expanded and inside of this expanded expanded I'll have a child of material button on press I'll not define just now and then down here okay we can define like the color for this it's going to be white of course color dot white and you're going to define the text color and we're going to give colors dot gray and after this I will do child and inside of here again I'm going to use a row and 
inside of this row again I'm going to use children again expanded and here I'm going to give new text size I always forget to do this right child child okay and here I'm going to do I'll copy this I'll paste it here and instead of of this text I'm going to give a new icon icons dot I need the arrow pointing down an arrow and we have what we want here size uh, I will just reduce the elevation to elevation I'll give it 0 0.2 something like that okay size uh, I will just come over here let us comment so it will be easier for us to access this stuff later on um, the first buttons Here I'm going to give the size button. And I do this equal 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 just to catch my attention when I'm looking for it. Let me copy this stuff here and I will just paste it three times. Paste, paste. Oops, 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 what did I do? And I have the code indented. If I control save this. This is what we have here, size, size, size. But here we want a color. And here we want quantity. Okay, let me try to quantity. It's way too long of a word, so I'll just write this. Okay, uh, for now, I guess we can stop here. And afterwards, we can do something like, uh, when I click on these, I get an alert so I can pick the size of the item, the color, the quantity of the item. Is it okay? Or oh, if you still want a bonus, we can like do something out of this. Like we can try doing something more. If you think the video was too short, it took too long to upload, and I have to do something else. Let me try to. Let me try to make you guys happy by copying this stuff and if you if you if, if you see since you get the hang of it it's kind of doing the same thing most of the time at least at the design stage it's kind of repetitive that's why I just copy this stuff above and I paste and I do some modifications and it's a good thing to do if you just want to have some time I guess okay 
here we can delete both of these and I'm going to be needing it on this section so let me just delete it here I'll write the second button okay for this guy I'm going to give colors of course I need it red and I'm going to give text color of course I need it white and I'm going to give what else uh, for the child instead of a row let us do new oh, oh, oops new text by now so now we have the buy button wow but let us do something else here where we're going to create a new icon button and for the buttons we're going to give icon icons dot favorite let me see if I can do okay I cannot okay so I have to do icon then icons dot oh what's the name of that icon this one to add to cart to make it possible for our users to add the item to the cart and what else what else what else should I put here okay give him the option to like it oh uh, so I'll just do oops so I'll just do this I'll paste it favorite border uh, but we'll give the colors of color colors dot red and here we're going to do the same thing color colors dot red so here you have it our basic design is done I'll try to leave the link on this particular video uh, what else for the next video we'll create some alert alerts by clicking on those and maybe uh, keep on editing this section or this particular page just for testing purpose you can go and open another image and it's working perfectly so I guess it's fine. See you guys on the next one. If you enjoyed, you know, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, don't forget to leave a comment. See you on the next one. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Uh, before we even start with today's goal, a small announcement. If you guys have... Uh, something in particular that you would like to learn in Flutter feel free to ask me to do a tutorial on that on the comment section below anything regarding Flutter if you want to see a specific playlist or if you, want, if you would like to build a specific type of application and you would like to have my help on that feel free to ask me uh, and I would like to diversify somehow uh, uh, the content of the channel we've been all, all overly focused on the e-commerce but for now we just want to finish this project so we can see something else but any suggestions you would you have anything you would like to say feel free to put that in the comment section below okay enough of the talking here is where we left off for our last video and uh, the goal for today is to put some alerts when you click on these buttons this 
was supposed to be a drop down but i just put some alerts because i was lazy to do drop downs so we'll just go with alerts no problem the hand goal will be the same and try to put some content over here okay so with that being said let's do it here we have the app the code i mean here we have the code and to create our alert we'll write here show dialog and this is what we have context context <clears throat> we're basically saying to sh to show the, the dialog in the context of the widget widget okay then we're going to provide builder and for the builder I don't know why I did that for the builder we are going to provide context again meaning they want to build that new widget on our current context then here we have to provide a return new alert dialog yeah, what's the matter here semicolon okay and now we are going to provide title since here is the size this is this button here let me just give new title what is this let me just give you text and here I'm going to give size let me control save this and let's try to run it and it's working nothing too fancy here okay and here I'm going to give the content again just going to provide new text and at the final stage of the app we are going to try to provide some ways of picking the color and all of that good stuff but for now we'll just write choose the color or, or, or the size right and uh, let's try to provide action is it going to be a material button no will not give nothing and down here then providing you no child new text close And this is what we have right let me try to zoom this maybe the code today is kind of small and again let me just go over this stuff here we have on pressed when you press the button will we'll provide 
show dialogue context context meaning we want to show the dialogue where the widget is present here in this particular context then we have a builder context we want to build the builder context it's what will allow to display the alert dialog we'll build the alert here in the current context again returning alert dialog okay title we're providing the title of the alert and the content of the alert here then inside of here we're providing a new button called close this here for now it does nothing uh can we try to code this to do something okay let us let us try navigator of context dot okay let us try to see if this is going to work if I if I didn't make any mistake it's supposed to and it does basically as I told you this is like a stack and as soon as we see this this is what is at the top of the stack this is what is at the top of the screen and when we pop we're basically removing what's at the top currently is the alert I hit close I close the alert and it's gone okay uh, we want to do the same thing for these buttons over here as a way of practicing, I'll let you uh, do this code again, but since I want to spare us some time, I'll just copy this. And I'll paste down there. I would encourage you to type this again, because uh, even I sometimes I forget about this stuff like about the exact exact syntax but still I just want to spare some time so I'll just paste I'll copy this and paste this many times and I'll just come over here and I'll type color colors choose the color or choose a color then finally oops is not that here finally we have quantity and again choose quantity Okay, and here we have everything working perfectly to choose the size, to choose the color, to choose the quantity. Uh, so what now? Now we'll go down here. We have this row widget. I want to see where it hands and it hands here and just about below that we'll provide something called new list tile and I'm going to give title new text product details I will control save this and see what happens 
we do have the product details and then I'm going to give subtitle new text and feel free to play with this stuff like the colors and stuff uh, I would like to have some Lauren here Broom, 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 broom. Sorry, I do have a lot of stuff there. I do have a lot of stuff on my window, but still. And if you don't know what lorem is, it's just a bunch of text that you can put as placeholders. So, I would definitely encourage you to use this stuff because it comes in handy most of the time okay and just like that I have the product details but I don't like the way this stuff is close to that upper section so I'll just place a divider here how about I provide a color for this and I give it colors dot red and see mm, I didn't like it so I'll just remove this and I'll keep it simple okay other than that what else can we put here uh, now seeing the interface, I suppose we're supposed to put some ratings somewhere, but I'll still try to figure out that. Uh, for now, we can put here something like, let me just check how is it on my mobile phone, because I already have it. Okay product name, product brand, and product condition. Let me just place that stuff. I may need a second divider to place it here. Then I'll use a row. Yes, new row, children, product, nope, it's not product, it's padding, padding, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening today, padding is what I want, uh, I can give this const, edge insert and here we're just providing the padding from left top right and bottom and here we're going to give 12 for the top I'm going to give 5 and the rest I'm going to give 5 5 5 5 here, 5 here, and then let us give this child new text, product name, Uh, I will need to put this style text style at least the color I have to change I'll give it colors oops I'll give it colors but gray okay I'll just copy 
this row over here I'll paste it here three times uh, product name product brand product condition okay uh, I just hope you guys can see this properly so I just hope the size is good so what are we going to do now I can give another I'm sorry I am already feeling sleepy as you can see it's midnight okay I'll provide padding edge insets all and I'll give 5.0 then I'm going to give a child of course I'm going to give you a text widget dot product detail name and as you can see I have the brand section here but I didn't configure in our product so we'll try to fix that maybe on the next video uh, for now we can do something simple which is coming here I do like copying stuff kind of a lazy programmer so I would encourage you to write your code to practice to memorize this stuff but for now and for the purpose of the video is not required having me doing that so I'll just write brand X for now and we'll try to see how can we uh, come over this and can we do this I was trying to create a to do I just forget how to do it but I can comment and write remember to create the product brand okay and finally new field that we may need to add to our product in the future is the condition of the product add the product condition I have some problems with English sometimes and for now we're just going to give I'm going to copy this again and I will paste it here and for the condition I'll give new which can be new or used so here's what we have for now product name blazer product brand brand X condition new okay uh, for the next video we'll just increment a field add a field down here for the related products and yeah we, we will do some good stuff Thank you very much guys for watching, thank you guys for supporting, for leaving your likes, your comments, 
for motiv for motivating me. Thank you for all of that good stuff. See you soon. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit that like, telling me what you did like, what you didn't like about the videos. And see you next time. God bless you. Bye.